G'day mate, Matty Graham here from Exponential Performance Coaching. Welcome back to another Whiteboard Wednesday. It's been a while. In today's video, we are going to start the first in a series about the energy system, and today we're going to be talking about ATP. What is it? What is it used for? And why do we only store such a small amount of it in our muscles when it's such an important thing? Let's get into it. G'day mate, Matty Graham here from Exponential Performance Coaching. Welcome back to another Whiteboard Wednesday. It has been a few years since we last did our Whiteboard Wednesday. I'm in my new office now in our new house after a couple of years of getting things established. But we're back in the game, so to speak. Today I want to kick off a bit of a series around energy systems. We've talked about it on the Exponential Performance Podcast recently, and I want to dig into it a little bit deeper here with the whiteboard. Today we're going to start off with a bit of an introduction around the energy systems, specifically digging into ATP a little bit more, uh, and getting a bit of a handle on that before we dive into our three different energy systems. So... ATP is the currency, if you like, that our energy systems trade in. Now, ATP is not consumed. You don't eat ATP. What we do is we eat food, and then the macronutrients are broken down, and it's up to our energy systems within our body to then produce ATP. And we're going to dig into that now. So ATP, it stands for adenosine triphosphate. This is the molecular makeup in a nutshell um, of ATP. Basically, we've got an adenine, a ribose. Those two molecules there are what we call the adenosine part of our makeup here. And then we have three phosphate molecules joined onto the end of it there, and that's where we get our triphosphate part of it. So adenosine for the A, Tri for the T, phosphate, because there's three phosphates there. Now, in a nutshell, how we get energy in, the, in our body is that this phosphate molecule here is cleaved off the, the adenosine triphosphate molecule, and in that reaction there, energy is released. And that energy is used for Every single movement action in our body. This includes glandular secretion. So the secretion of anything in our body uses ATP, uses energy. Any nerves that are firing, ATP is used. Digestion, tissue synthesis, which is the making of new tissues. Circulation and obviously muscle action. All of these things require this here to happen. Without this, there is no life. So that's ATP in a nutshell. This is what it's used for. Every single movement in our human body, every single action, every single nerve impulse. We're going to be talking most about this one, muscle action, because obviously this is the one we tend to be most interested in when it comes to exercise. Now ATP has a limited storage in our body. We only have actually about two to three seconds of ATP stored in the muscle. And the primary reason behind this is because ATP is actually really, really heavy. Seems strange, but it actually is. During the day, if you were to be sedentary all day, the amount of ATP required for you just to live and function is about 75% of your total body weight. Think about that. So to make the maths really easy, if you were 100 kilos, you would require 75 kilograms of ATP just to be sedentary day. If we have a think about um, running a marathon, when you run a marathon, around about that two and a half hour mark, so relatively hard exercise, you use about 20 times your resting metabolism. So your resting metabolism is here, 
run a marathon at two and a half hour pace, hard exercise, using about 20 times more energy. So to run a two and a half hour marathon would require approximately, depending on your weight, about 80 kilos of ATP. So you can see it's really, really heavy. And that's why we don't store it. Because if we just had a normal body weight plus another 80 kilos of um, ATP on there just to function on a day-to-day -day basis, then we would be struggling to move. And that's why our three energy systems are super important. First of all, we've got our anaerobic ATP PCR system. We've got our anaerobic glycolytic system. And finally, we've got our aerobic system. Our anaerobic glycolytic and our ATP PCR system are both anaerobic. They function without oxygen. And our aerobic energy system uses oxygen, aerobic, with oxygen. So now that we've got a bit of an understanding of ATP, what it's used for, and the limited storage, we're going to jump into our first energy system in the next video, which is going to be ATP PCR system. Come and check it out.